Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about Just Walk On By, written by Brent Staples. Now, before I go into the summary and analysis of this work, here's what you're going to do for me. I'm going to summarize and analyze this essay, this work by Brent Staples, and you're going to like, subscribe, or leave a comment as you wish. Help the channel grow, um, and I'll keep making summaries. I mean, I feel like that, that works for both of us. Um... Let's talk about this work. Um, basically what happens in this work, Brent Staples, uh, he's a black man, he's, he's tall, uh, and he, he's kind of like telling us about uh, what it is to be in America when you're black, when you know, you're know you a black man and let's say you're tall and you're well built and people are oftentimes just afraid of you by just looking at you. Now, we have to keep in mind that this uh, essay was published in the 80s, um, so it's 2020 now, so this essay is, is, is a little bit more, it's older. Uh, so the same reactions and the same results that uh, we see in this essay might not happen today. I'm not saying that racism um, you know, doesn't exist anymore, it certainly um, still exists. Uh, but uh, people are not, you know, running for the mountains when they see a black man on the street walking anymore. Um, you know, in most cases, people are just, you know, doing their business or, or just minding the, their own business. Um, so Brent Staples in, in the 80s, he's like a college student. He's, he's a person that's harmless. He tells us in the essay he's a person that won't even put a, a, a knife to a kitchen's, to a kitchen, a chicken, wow, to a chicken's neck. Uh, he's not a violent person. Uh, he's a he's a university student. He's an academic. He's a he's a harmless individual. He's not about violence. He's not about doing anything wrong. But the thing is, like at the beginning of the essay, we see him in a in a kind of an affluent neighborhood, and this white woman sees him down the street, and she's automatically terrified, um, and she pretty much runs away from him because she doesn't want to be harmed. She doesn't want to be attacked. Now, when you look at cities around the United States, places in, you know like Chicago, Brooklyn, and places in New York, um, you know high uh, pop, you know popular cities, well-known cities that have uh, minorities in it. Um, a lot of times there are, uh, especially in New York, there's there's you know there's New York is famous for muggings and and you know people taking people's wallets um, on the train on the streets. Um, that that does happen, and for women, it's uh, ten times more dangerous because women, you know, they have purses. Uh, you can see where their purses are because they're always holding them in their arms, um, and so muggers often take the purse or uh, you know take women's money or attack women on the street. And so late at night, um, for the white women, the black man just looks threatening, and she sees Brent Staples as a threat, so she runs. Um, and you know, she's, she's thinking about her health and safety. Now the thing is like, she might be afraid. She might think that he, he he's dangerous. Uh, but the thing is like, um, you can't 100% say that she's just a racist and she just hates him. Uh, she's all, she also knows that muggings are something that, uh, that happen. Um, and even Brent Staples throughout this essay, he says that muggings do occur. Uh, people often come out of the projects and go into uh, the the outer parts of affluent neighborhoods and uh, mug those who are more wealthy. But the thing is, like at the same time, there is a lot of racism because it's not just the white women. It, it's it's a lot of people who are affluent, a lot of people who are white, or just people who are well off. Um, it's not just white people. It's just people who um, see black men as a threat. Um, and, you know, this is the 80s, uh, so, you know, racism was much more prevalent, was much more, um, you know, significant. Um, and Brent Staples, he gives us a lot of antidotes, he gives us a lot of examples where he's in Chicago, he's in New York, he's in the streets, and people are just afraid of him because he's black. Um, people were locking their car doors, you know, click, 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 locking their car doors. They always see him as a threat. They always see him as something that's that's threatening, that, that might endanger them. Um, so the rich, the white, uh, the affluent, um, you know, they just perceive black people like that. And Brent Staples, he says that he himself, he's tall. Um, and, you know, he knows that he's, he's a bigger kind of guy. Um, and so... You know, this essay, Brent Staples, he's, he, he tells us how he gets through this. He tells us what, you know, just walk on by. What does that mean? And pretty much what he does is he, he you know, creates a system of getting around the street. 
he makes himself seem not violent. You know, he even though he is not, he's not a violent person. By his character, he's not a violent person. But he goes to extra means to show that he's not a violent person. This is a guy to make people feel more comfortable in the streets. He's he's whistling Beethoven um, in part um, popular classical numbers. He's whistling on the street. He's wearing clean clothes. He's he's you know clearly putting his face out on the street. He's not covering himself. Um, he's making himself not seem threatening, trying to put people at ease, um, you know, uh, making himself look softer, making himself look more gentle, uh, making himself look m more, you know, making everybody around, everybody around him comfortable so he can come off not as a threat. Um, you know, most people just, they, when they see him and he's black, they're like, we got to run away. Um, this is the 80s. He might attack us. Um, and he's all about putting people at ease. And so this essay, um, one part of it is showing you the plight of black people um, in the 80s in America. And the other part of it is him trying to live his life the best as he can and not drawing that too much attention to himself. Um, Brent Staples, he, he's a journalist in the 80s. Um, and he, there's several circumstances because of racism. People try to arrest him. Cops try to arrest him. Uh, people are threatened by him. You know, he's out there in the street um, getting stories. He, he's a journalist, uh, writing stories, getting stories. And when, you know, if you're a black man, don't just don't run. Just just don't. Because when a, for some reason, whenever a black man runs, it just never ends well. Um, because people automatically think that you did something and they're, they're always after you. Um, he gives us this one example where he's he's working in the, for this newspaper. He's working for the editor. He's a, he's a worker there. And he has this, this news, this, this article that he wants to get um, on the paper. And he's, you know, he's running to his boss's office. Uh, and automatically something somebody thinks that you know he's he's uh, uh, trying to rob somebody or he's trying to do something bad um, and automatically you get guards going after him uh, security going after him um, and thinking that he's a threat that he's a criminal um, when he's not he's just trying to do his job so you know at every part of this in like at the, at his you know on the streets at his workplace everywhere he goes at col in college wherever he goes he's just seen as this black man he has to to keep himself composed when the cops pull him over he has to keep himself composed when people see him in the streets you know you can't as a black man for in most places and in, in public offices in public places on the streets at, at your job you always always have to keep your emotions in check and that's what Brent Staples um, he, that's what he does within this essay to keep himself safe to stay alive he tells us that he's he's buried a lot of his friends and family members uh, who are black and who try to act out, who try to, you know, go through it by the strength of their arms, by, by their own might, by their own bravery, and they all end up dead. Um, but, you know, he doesn't want to die. He wants to survive. And if you're a black man, um, the best way to survive, the best way to thrive in this country is by keeping your head down. Um, you know, most people, they don't want to hear this. Most people want to, you know, rah, rah and, and fight. Uh, but the thing is, like, Sometimes there is a time to fight to fight with with your arms and your body, but there's also a time um, to challenge something with your mind, with your actions. Um, quietly, you know, Brent Staples is making a difference um, through his writing, through his, um, you know, he's, he's, you know, Brent Staples uh, is a known author. He's a known writer. He's written a lot of pieces about um, race and education. He's written a lot of pieces about you know just just the educational system and uh, you know black people's um, part in America. You know those works, those writings have gone farther than you know a black man trying to fight someone in the street. Um, those words have have done more uh, than someone trying to change things through violence. Uh, because, you know, stories through violence, they'll, they'll make a, a pop in, in the media world and then everybody forgets about it. But Brent Staples works, uh, they're going to be here 10 years from now, 20, 40 years from now, and any black man can pick it up, read it, and learn something about this country and learn about how they can exist in the country. And it's something that can power, empower, um, give more people power and how to conduct themselves and how to change the world around us. Um, you know, the civil rights movement, all black movements around Around the world it's not always through violence it's through careful planning and thinking and seeing what you can do without getting yourself killed because your voice is stronger and your voice is wiser uh, when you can think of a way out 
of changing people's minds, of changing policies, of changing laws uh, without doing it with your fists. So he controls himself. I mean, it is a, a downer that he has to change his personality. Uh, imagine a person like Brent Stables. He has to do everything that everybody else to do. He has to go to work. He has to take care of his family, you know, his loved ones. Um, but at the same time, he, when he's on the street, um, when he's at work, when he's doing when he's doing regular things, he has to put on this extra persona in the eighties uh, to make people around him feel more comfortable because he knows if he doesn't do that, he's going to be devoured. He's going to be hunted down he's probably going to be charged and booked and cops are going to come after him and everybody's going to challenge him and see him see him as a threat um at the end of the essay he ends it by saying that you know just like how hikers wear bells in, in bear country, that's what he's doing here. Because he's whistling Beethoven, because he's dressing um, in a way that's not threatening, because he's 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 you know putting a smile on his face, smiling at people, um, putting his you know a fake persona out there, um, people see him as as not a threatening individual. Because you know how could a criminal be you know whistling Beethoven? Uh, you know that's what he says within the essay. So he tells us at the end of the essay that he he's putting on bells. Uh, like a hiker in bear country, because if you don't, if you are in the minority in America, um, if you are, uh, you know, a black person, an individual who's in the minority, who's not wealthy, who's not powerful, you have to keep your head down in order for you to survive and always make sure that you show that you're not threatening, that you're not trying to do anything to disrupt anybody, because that's the way you can save your life, save the life of your family and change the world quietly. Um, Martin Luther King, he wasn't just protesting in the streets. He was writing. He was talking. He was giving speeches. It's not through might and power and punching and, and, and fighting. You know, he was writing. He was giving sermons. He was changing the minds of people. Once you can change the mind, uh, the minds of the masses, you can change policy. You can change your plight in the world. The violence, it's just, it gets people angry. Uh, it gets people to start fighting and it gets you killed. But talking, but changing attitudes, but, you know, changing people's opinions about you and, and what you are and who you are, it goes much, in, it goes, um, it goes farther um, and it changes people's opinions. And that's what Brent Staples does. He puts his cowbells on as he talks, as he, as he says um, at the end of the essay, uh, he makes, he tells the bears, which is, which is pretty much the wealthy white people or the, the dominant culture, he puts his bells on, he tells the dominant culture, I'm not threatening, I'm I'm not here to, to hurt you in any way. I'm just trying to live my life as best as I can. Um, and at the same time, he's changing the, the dominant culture's perspective on him and also talking to black people um, and how they can survive and how they can make a difference. Um, so that's pretty much the essay. That's what it's talking about. That's what's significant about it. Um, you know, it's an interesting piece to, to read. Um, it also shows you the struggle. Um, like, in, you know, in terms of analysis, in terms of a deeper meaning here, guys, uh, this really shows you what black people have to go through because in every, you know, wh wherever you go, if you start to act out as a black person, if you start to, to, to do things as a black person, people are going to let look at you a certain way. Uh, even though it's, you know, we're in 2020, um, things have changed. There are rights left and right. Uh, but still, since you are in the minority, since, you know, you're not in, in, in in the top tier of the dominant culture, uh, you are always going to be looked at a certain way, um, and there's certain things that are going to uh, be against you. And Brent Stables, even though that he's a college student within this work, he's doing everything that he's supposed to do as an individual. Uh, he still has to put on a persona every time he goes outside of his house, every time he's at work, to make sure that people see him as um, as an individual who's not a threat. Uh, which is it's it's sad in a way, but at the same time, it's keeping him alive, and he doesn't have to to bury. He has he doesn't have to to die, um, and, and you know his life doesn't have to 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 end, just like his other friends and family members have. Uh, and he gets he goes on and survives and and creates his family and and spreads his message um, about um, you know just surviving and and not being dead and that's very significant um so that's the essay um just walk on by that's what it has to say you're not engaging um some people when when the cops you know for a lot of bad people when the cops pull you over uh when somebody is afraid of you on the street you want to, to confront them uh you want to talk to them you want to start a conversation um it, it, you don't have to 
You know, you don't have to to get angry, to get mad, to to start a riot, to to show that you know you have a big chest and you're ready to fight and you're ready to do this. You have to stay calm. You stay calm. Uh, this is something that that's been around for thousands of years. We've seen it through the work of Martin Luther King. We've seen it in the Bible and, and how Jesus Christ preached. Uh, we've seen it with uh, with Gandhi. Um, if you stay calm, you use your words. Um, you you talk to people. Um, you you make sure that they see you as non threatening, and you change their minds. You can change your plight in the world. Um, because Martin Luther King, one thing that he did that was very significant is that he made um, the American population, he made them feel bad. He made them feel horrible. He made them feel the pang and the pain of what black people had gone through in this country. And once you can get into people's minds and make them feel the pain and make them feel the struggles and make them feel what you've gone through, what you've witnessed, what your kids have witnessed, they can see that you're just a human just trying to live your life. That's all you want and that's what all you're looking for. Um, but when you give people something to fight you against when 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 you give people a reason to fight you a reason to hate you they're not going to listen to what you're going to have to say and they're not going to help you uh so that that's my perspective on this work um just what i have to have to say about it there's always more to the story um if you read it to um, yourself if you look more into it there's always more to the summary there's always more to the analysis but that's just my my perspective on it please remember to leave a like subscribe and or comment and i'll see you guys in the next video